News broke it down and the candidates interrupted moderator Chris Wallace 92 times combined. As a reminder, here's a sample from Tuesday night. Joe, you agree with Bernie Number, Sanders, I, I, far I, left, on the manifesto, when, when we you, call it. When, when, and that gives you socialized medicine. Will you who shut is up, your, man. Listen, who is on your list, Joe? This Who's is on your so right. Gentlemen, is, I think this we've is ended so this. He's going to pack the court. We have end, we're no, not no. going to give a list. We have ended this segment. We're going to move on to the second segment. That was really a pr productive segment, wasn't it? Put Try to be no, honest. I, I, he stood up. No, I, 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 the answer to the question is no. Ukraine. No, I, sir. With a billion dollars, if you get rid of that, you know what? You're really not what you're true. Tape you're doing it. You're going to have tape. true. Gentlemen, is, <laughs> I, I hate to raise Chris, my voice, but I see it seems to be. Why should I be different than the two of you? Fox News Sunday anchor Chris Wallace, my guest now, and good afternoon to you. Nice to see you still standing. Uh, you know, I, I, I had just gotten over <laughs> no. uh, the PTSD, and you put me right back into it Sorry there. about that. I'm going to take a few moments. Let's go over a couple things here, because I know you, and y you have a plan. At what point did that plan blow up? Good evening. <laughs> I mean, not a, a little bit after that. Here's, here's what happened. You know, we began the first segment on the Supreme Court. They each got their two minutes, and they both uh, uh, obeyed in that particular case. Uh, then Biden started to answer a question, and the president started interrupting him. And my initial reaction was, this is great, because so often these debates become parallel news conferences where one candidate answers the question to him, the other candidate answers the question to him. So when the president started engaging with Biden, I thought, we're going to have a real debate here. It became clearer and clearer over time that this was something different and that uh, the president was determined to try to butt in and throw uh, Joe Biden off. Uh, you, you gave your statistics. I saw another Fox analysis that indicates the president interrupted either Biden's answers or my questions a total of 145 times, which is way more than one a minute. And, and he bears the primary responsibility well, for what happened on Tuesday. So he, here's what I'm curious about. In the moment, did you think to yourself, this is a mess, or did you think I can get this back on track? Well, your, your initial thought is that the president is interrupting too often when I'm doing Fox News Sunday. My, my thought is when two people are talking, you can't hear either of them. So I kept trying to get the president uh, to, to stop and let Biden finish his answer and, and let them go back and forth. Uh, and, and then it kept escalating. So, you know, in the beginning, I was cajoling, uh, Mr. President, wait a minute, I'm going to ask a question that you, you're going to want to hear. Uh, I guess I did that twice. Uh, and then uh, I, I began being more forceful. And at a certain point, 45 minutes in, I called a, a halt to the debate and for a moment and said, you know, this really isn't serving America. And, and, and please stop the interruptions. And the president said, well, why don't you uh, admonish him? And I said, because you're doing a lot more of the interrupting, Mr. President. Biden was doing some, no question about it but less than half as many times as the president well, Was did. it your view that the, the president had more volume and you, you heard that more than perhaps Joe Biden? Uh, it, it, he certainly talked louder, but he also talked more often. I mean, as I say, the Fox News analysis 145 times. The frustration here, Bill, is this, that here, here was my debate book. And, and literally hundreds of man hours and woman hours between me and my researcher went in to try to prepare a serious, substantive debate. And on so many issues, uh, Biden's tax and spending plans, uh, Trump's climate and environmental policies, you know, I, I was really hoping for the, for the debate that I think America wanted to see, which was a serious exchange of views. And, and, you know, I felt like I had, had gotten together all of the ingredients. I had baked uh, uh, this beautiful, delicious cake. And then, frankly, the president put his foot in it. And uh, it, that was frustrating, because frustrating for me, because I tried hard to, to prepare for a serious debate, much more frustrating and more importantly for the American people, because they didn't yeah. get the debate they wanted and that they deserved. Uh, and I think that's that's a loss for the country okay, I, because I, they didn't I, get to hear I, these two I, I guys a, nearly as much yeah. as I think they should have. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I've just got a few more here. Uh, well, I've there you go. You I, see, it's another interruption. <laughs> <laughs> Counted. That's number one for Hemmer. Um, I've been watching the fallout, and it has been hot. 
And a lot of that criticism has been directed toward you. Whether it's the campaigns or the media or the voters, how do you respond to them two days later? Well, you know, I've gotten a lot of praise, and I also have gotten a lot of criticism. And, you know, I guess my answer is uh, hindsight's 2020. If I had known that the debate was going to keep going this way, I guess I thought originally, as I say first, that the president was going to engage in a debate with, with Biden and let Biden answer so they could go back and forth. Uh, that, that was a misapprehension. Then I thought maybe the president's going to do this in the first segment, try to rattle Biden. When that didn't work, I thought, and I think he would have been well advised to pull back and let Biden talk more because Biden's answers weren't always great. In fact, sometimes uh, I think if the president had stepped back and let Biden give his answers, he could have been more effective in picking them apart. And it was only, you know, uh, 45 minutes in that I realized what a, what a just a total mess and disservice this was to the country and to try to stop it. Do I wish I had stepped in earlier? Yes. But as I say, hindsight is 20. Yeah, you know, the president said at one point it's two on one. He felt like he was debating you and Joe Biden. Uh, others have suggested that Joe Biden didn't answer a lot of the questions that are in that notebook right there about the filibuster and, and the Supreme Court. Have you gone back to look at well, Tuesday he had, night? Well, he, he answered the question, but as I say, I think the president made a mistake because so often he would butt in and prevent Joe Biden from answering or not answering. Uh, I think he would have been well advised, and not that he needs my advice in the next two debates, let Biden answer. Then you can pick it up. I don't disagree with that. I, I compared uh, the analogy I drew was, you know, Joe Biden was about to dive off a diving board into the pool, and, and the president pulled him back and kept him on dry land. H have you gone back to watch Tuesday night, or will you? Oh, God, no. <laughs> oh, God, no, no. Um, it wasn't something that I wanted to revisit. I'll probably, look, it took me four years to rewatch the uh, Trump-Clinton debate from uh, 2016, which I very much enjoyed. Uh, it, it, you know, and it still took me four years to look at it. I, this is going to take a while before I watch, you know, Chris, watch this one again. But thanks to people like you, I'm seeing a lot of I'm clips. I'm sorry, but and, I, and they I, remind I, me how awful it was. I saw you at midnight Tuesday night. I've been, I've been, I've been looking for the opportunity to get a more th thought out of you because uh, I thought it was a mess when we were in the middle of it. But listening to the clips again on Wednesday, I thought there was a lot of substance there. And frankly, there were a lot well, of issues out there. There was still a lot, as we say, a lot of chicken on the bone. Uh, there are questions and issues that need to be answered by both men still, with two debates remaining. Well, now, would you support? Absolutely. Uh, would you support changes I, no, in the I, rules I thought, or not? I thought. I well, quickly. I think that there was a lot of substance in the debate, and the fact that we're still talking about what the president said or failed to say about Prob Voice is interesting. What he said or, uh, about uh, the election going to the Supreme Court, Biden, who seemed to be at one point for the Green New Deal before he was against it. As far as the rules are concerned, you know, I certainly would like to see a more orderly debate. I'm just not sure that any of the possible changes, take just the, the one that's being talked out about most, uh, and, and that's the idea of cutting off mics. One, in this debate, they, they were only six, eight feet from each other. Even if you would cut off the president's mic, I guess you would still have heard it over Biden's. And in addition, the president still would have been disrupting and distracting Biden. And secondly, we're talking about the president of the United States and the Democratic nominee. You know, they say, well, we're going to give the moderator a button to, to mute them. Boy, I don't want to be in the position of saying, you know, I'm going to interpose myself between the president and the public and say, you can't hear what he has to say now. I think that's a pretty that's, tough spot it's pretty to put any moderator yeah. in. Uh, last question, town hall next in a little less than two weeks. Does it, is it different this time, the next time? Well, I, I th if I had one piece of advice to, to give Steve Scully, who's going to be the moderator for that, I would say take the citizens, take the, the, the real people that are going to be there and use them as a shield. So if one, and look, maybe it'll be Biden interrupting Trump this time. If, if you feel it's unruly, say, look, these are real people with real problems. Let them ask their questions and let the other person answer their questions. So I would use the fact that you're talking to real people and it's not just two politicians and a journalist mm -hmm. uh, as, as an opportunity to try to keep some order. Thank you, Chris. Nice to see you. I got back to New York and they said, how was Cleveland? I said it was fine until, they, the, until the game started. Uh, you have a good day. Appreciate your time and your thoughts today. Thank you. Chris Wallace, my colleague there in Washington.